I'm just gonna focus on things that'll make me better, things that'll make me feel better, and things that'll make me super duper happy, right? What does that have to do with today's video? Well, today's bija is about the plants, the top five plants that is making me super duper happy right now. <laughs> and I can't wait to share it with you. So if you want to see some plants that are making me happy, that are making me giggle, kilig, everything, then, you know, keep on watching. Oh. If we're just first meeting, my name is Sharina and in this channel we talk about bringing more plants into our homes because I truly believe that the more plants we have, the more purpose, the more joy, and the more happiness we have in our lives. So if you're new, consider subscribing. The very first one, and you're gonna keep hearing me say this about pretty much all five of these plants, okay? This one fits everything that I want in a plant. It is so adorable, it is fast growing, and so easy to take care of. So Sharina, stop talking and start showing. This very first one is my beautiful and super adorable Calicia Repens Veregata, girl. How adorable is this plant, right? It is that beautiful combo of pink and green and white that we all all love and I also love that the stem is a beautiful purple color I swear it just gets purpler and purpler each week I take a look at it or each week I kind of examine it to water it also the leaves have the most adorable little shape as you can see it is very reminiscent of the Tretus cantia because duh it is in the Tretus cantia family you've seen the wandering dude or the Tritus Cantia Nanook. Well, this one is kind of like her little sister or her cousin, her pinsan, because they're very similar, right? Also, upon feeling these leaves, it actually looks like they are so delicate, just like the other Tritus Cantias in their family, you know, like the Fluminensis. There's another one, Tahitian Bride, I think. Their leaves are so like paper thin and so delicate. I've even burned a couple. <laughs> not on purpose. The leaves of this one is so much different because it's so much thicker. It's almost waxy, like rubbery. It's like, I just want to bite it. I'm so giggle because it is so adorable. Look at the full pink leaves that this one has. It even has the half green, half pink, or yeah, half green, half pink leaves that we all love. One reason this makes me really happy is because of how fast it grows. It is so satisfying to bring a plant home and within a couple of weeks, bam, it is just like trailing. I wish I had a picture. See if you can get your hands on one of these. It'll just make you so happy and bring you so much joy. I love you. This next one is so exciting for me because I finally found one. I used to see it all the time at my big box stores at my local Armstrong Garden Center. Then all of a sudden it just stopped coming in. I think people caught on and was like, oh my gosh, is it rare? If it's rare, I have to have it. I don't know if it's rare, okay? If it's cute, I like it. And that is my beautiful philodendron silver stripe. Again, probably like the cousin or the pinsan of the philodendron Brazil. I think it is the silver stripe that's what the label said but it also looks like the philodendron cream splash the weird thing about this plant is that like every leaf looks different and i don't mean like in variegation i mean in shape so let me show you one that makes me think that this could be the cream splash you see these two leaves right there they're more narrower they also have that white to the green, to dark green, like ombre effect on it. But on the other hand, some leaves just look all weird like this. That's one of my favorite things about this plant is that every leaf just looks different and not in variegation, but in shape, okay? And what is this? Take a look at this one. What is that? It looks like a paw. It looks like a pig's hoof. Like, I don't even understand what's going on with these, with these really deformed looking leaves. And you know what? I am here for it. I love when plants have this like unique flair to them where they all just kind of look so different from each other. This is the most craziest silver stripe cream splash Brazil I've ever seen and I knew I had to get it. Now if you're familiar with 
Hartley philodendrons, you know how easy they are to take care of. And that is no different from this one. I'm assuming, again, I've only had this for about a week or two weeks. I'm gonna actually see if this is gonna require a little bit more light than a regular Hartley philodendron Cardatum heterosseum because it does have more, you know, variegation. See what I'm saying about this leaf? Look how different each and every one of these leaves look. This one is crazy. Like some of them just look long and the variegation just takes over in the middle. And then some just have zero variegation. And then we have ones that are just a single stripe. This could be a bunch of different plants put together in one pot, but I am here for it, okay? I love it. Every plant that I have, I think there's something about it that really stands out. And that's one of the best things I think about plants. They're not necessarily rare. They're not necessarily, you know, expensive or hard to find. If this plant is making you happy, if it touches you in a certain way, which sounds really weird, but sometimes when I see a plant, it does kind of like, you know, talk to me. It's kind of like, Sharina, you know you want to buy me. You know you have no room, but buy me anyways. You know when plants are just kind of talking to you and you just feel like a connection with it. That's so weird. I'm weird. For this next one, she's a little controversial, okay? She's got some girls hating on her, yet she also has some girls loving her. So you either love this one or you hate this one. Me, I love this one. I am all about the controversy. <laughs> this is my beautiful Hoya Retusa, darling. Why don't some people like this? This is so cool. Like, this is probably the coolest looking Hoya that I have. I love that it looks like just a bunch of stems. If you look up close, the end of every leaf kind of has a little nub, kind of like a butt chin to them, like a Jay Leno chin, which makes me think they kind of look like little bones, right? And I love, love, love how this one is trailing super long. Now, I didn't grow this myself. I actually bought it super long already because I have a feeling that this one's one of those slow growing Hoyas and I don't have time to wait for my Retusa to get this long and this cool looking. Like it just looks so whimsical. It looks like something out of Avatar. Like I said earlier, there are some people that don't enjoy this kind of Hoya and all I want to say is back it. Why? This is so cool. I love grass-like leaves, kind of like the Linearis. Um, what else is there that's kind of like twigs? I know there's a lot of Ripsalis that kind of look like they're just little twigs, little stems, and I am here for it. So I have this beautiful Hoya Retusa hanging in an east-facing window on a wooden shelf macrame, if that makes sense, where she's getting a lot of light. As you know, if you are here and you are a Hoya lover, which I know you are because you're here, Hoyas require so much light. I've had this for maybe a month and a half. I don't think it's grown, <laughs> really. But then again, this is like one of those things where I'm not even really sure if it grew or not. I really can't help how much this makes me happy just by looking at it. Isn't this beautiful? I wonder why it's called Retusa. Kind of like Medusa, you know, the snake, right? No? Okay, no. <laughs> okay, wow, I really should have watered this one before I showed it to you because it is droopy. Okay, so this is my Adenia Glauca. Still learning about this one for the most part. I know a lot of people have mentioned that they think it looks like malongai, which is a type of Filipino vegetable. I probably ate it. I'm just not sure what it tastes like. If I taste it again, I'm pretty sure I've had it, but I probably would have saved some coin if I just bought that from Seafood City. Look how cute these little leaves are. They kind of remind me of like fig leaves. It's a caudiciform or a caudex plant, which means it has that little ball underneath. You can't see it right now. And I also think this is a much younger version of that because I've seen bigger ones of these and they're not that cute. I actually um, wish it would stay this size, but it would probably be a long time until this gets to, you know, the girth. Hey, the thickness that the older ones have. I really like that it looks, you know, more thin and very feathery like this younger one. What's weird is that I assume that since they have that base at the bottom that they retained a lot more water, but from my experience, and this is just 
what I've learned with my ficus petiolaris, with my monolina. I also give them a lot of sun. This one is in my south facing window right over here in my office. Look at how beautiful the leaves are with this one. I love how these leaves kind of look like fingers. And since it has that whimsical effect, I feel like it just makes me so happy every time I come into my office and take a look at her. Right now she's droopy. So hi to my beautiful and whimsical Adinia Glauca. So for this next one that is making me super duper happy right now is my beautiful, my so fuzzy, velvety Peperomia Incana. Look how velvety and fuzzy this is. Also, the leaf shape is so adorable. As I'm looking at it right now, it actually looks heart-shaped, right? But I wish you can come and touch these leaves because these are the most softest, the most velvetiest leaves I've ever had in a plant. I don't think I have anything that feels like this or looks like this. Isn't this beautiful? It's kind of like a muted green, but it does look muted because it has so much fuzz to cover it. Okay, so I don't have that much experience with fuzzy plants. I shared this in my haul a couple of videos ago. If you haven't seen it, I'm gonna go ahead and link it right up here but they've mentioned that they didn't have good luck with fuzzy plants and i'm just like curious as to why like let me know do you have any furry fuzzy velvety plants like this and why would it be difficult because i feel like any plants that i've had that was a little bit textured like the philodendron micans syndapsis or skin dapsis pictus um what else has texture? Those plants tend to be pretty easy because they tend to retain a lot of water. Maybe their texture has something to do with it. Maybe it's just, I'm just, you know, the boss of plant care of those plants and they're just happy with me. But let me know if you have a Peperomia incana or something like this. Check out the roots on these. So these have been propagating for about a month. She is teaching me patience, which, which is okay. Um, it's popping out a few really good roots. I'm gonna wait a couple of more weeks hopefully maybe a couple more inches to pop these up if you like this video give me a like also subscribe huh why haven't you subscribed i see you i see you leaving me comments all the time i see you're not subscribed so subscribe it really really helps me out and now the sun is moving so we're gonna go thank you i appreciate you bye